Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com, and welcome to this week's supply and demand, forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. Um, if you're new, a very, very warm welcome to you, and if you're returning, an equally warm welcome to you. And um, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your fellow colleagues the video and videos I have on my YouTube channel, as it's a free way to support the channel and uh, really get the quality content out to uh, the traders that really need it and uh, really are trading one process um, is combining uh, fundamental analysis as well as technical analysis to really identify the best trading uh, opportunities so um, let's look at uh, the, the calendar um, ahead of, from trading economics and uh, the calendar um, a few things to be aware of I guess this week is um, uh, really kind of the uh, GDP you've got the pound GDP month for month uh, for April um, the consensus I guess is uh, that it's going to be uh, it's going to go from a negative to into the positive territory and I guess it should be but the, uh, but the trading economics is forecast is for actually just it for it to kind of flatline um, either way that, that you know that it's been kind of priced in anyway anything you know way below that I think it becomes that negative I mean that's just going to add pressure to the uh, to the pound and I'm already short the pound um, anyway I've been short the pound for a couple of months now my bias has definitely been that and uh, and um, yeah uh, I'll get into some of the trades uh, on the pound, especially the pound um, uh, pound dollar uh, that um, some of the guys in the group have uh, made a tidy little profit on uh, from a few weeks ago. Um, Tuesday 14th, we've got unemployment rate as well. Uh, that's important for uh, overall GDP and claimant count change, but unemployment rate for April is going to come in. Still, I think unemployment should be uh, forecasted as uh, pretty stable. Um, Wednesday is going to be really the big um, announcement is really the Fed um, interest rate decision. Currently, we're at, we're at one percent, and I think they're going to what's that? I think, but the probability is that they're going to what the market expects is that it's going to be um, a, a, a fifty basis points a half uh, percentage uh, rate hike. Um, so nothing new there. I think what's really new is is or what the thing to kind of watch as well is um, the press conference to see how hawkish um, the uh, the Federal Reserve are when it comes to their dot plot. And uh, future rate hikes, um, uh, uh, CPI came out um, higher than expected on Friday, so it's putting pressure on the Fed to actually do a bit more and be a bit more hawkish. I'll get into that um, uh, in the uh, in in the um, in depth analysis and chart analysis uh, coming up Thursday. We've got uh, I'll say balance of trade is decent for Japan, unemployment rate for Australia. Um, Again, uh, no real major changes. Um, and then we've got the Bank of England interest rate decision. So they're expected to hike uh, at, at 25 basis points or 0.25%. Um, there are uh, potential calls for that they may hike even more. And if they do, I think the pound will go you know, higher in the short term. But overall, um, we'll say higher, but it would appreciate in the short term. But I think in the, um, in the medium to long term, unless they get a really a grip on um on inflation and uh you know uh, i guess they don't want to hike too much simply because if they do hike um too much they could um send the economy into a bit of a recession as uh, there's higher borrowing and lending costs and if businesses are already struggling and consumers are already feeling the pinch from cost of living crisis then um having having higher interest rates doesn't help a situation when the economy is contracting so uh, and then we've got Friday Bank of Japan interest rate decision as well which is expected to uh, remain at uh, minus 0 0.1 so um, those are really the, the, the key um, uh, news events coming up this week any surprises are you know potential trading opportunities There's always trading opportunities but in the short term trading opportunities but longer term um, you know just looking for divergences in monetary policy still or convergences right so let's start off on the technicals I say start off but let's go to the technicals um, dollar index and uh, technically we've seen obviously prices make higher highs and higher lows now uh, dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength against a basket of currencies and um, in fact what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this probably all the way up here got a lot of demand here and um, as I've been saying pretty much for 
uh, pretty uh, for over a year now is that the dollar has been a buy right and this is nothing to do with uh, Elliott wave theory if you're an Elliott wave you know uh, uh, practitioner and wave one two three four five that's absolute nonsense um, this has been driven by monetary policy and divergence in monetary policy central banks um, hiking uh, rates and uh, hiking rates has a direct effect of appreciating the currency and if you understand that then you'll understand that you should have really been buying the dollar for um, for a while right just waiting on pullbacks so um, dollar index uh, to me is a buy just waiting for a pullback potentially before getting long in the short term anyway there are I think there is an opportunity to potentially get uh, short on the dollar um, but I think for now um, I think the dollar is still being supported so um, for me uh, this is just used as confluence the dollar index and so looking at you know the fundamentals and what you know happened was that uh, the, the fed task gets tougher putting 75 basis points hike uh, back into view so investors bet on 75 basis point points but not seen lightly next week power faces press conference wednesday uh, congress uh, June uh, 22nd, 23rd, and bad news on inflation, hardened expectations. The Federal Reserve will keep raising interest rates in half point steps through September, with talk of an even larger move mounting in the conversation. So, um, because of uh, inflation going higher, they have to hike rates a bit more. And so, that is really what was driving. Um, uh, the, the the dollar you know to the apps um, uh, higher right because of the market has to uh, price in what a potential what potential more hikes means for the currency and that should have obviously hikes generally and typically have a um, an appreciating effect on the uh, on the currency or should do obviously there are different circumstances but as I say typically and usually this is the case so um, when inflation came out higher it just basically signaled to the market that the fed has to do more to try to combat inflation so um, any pullbacks i think uh, on the dollar in the short term of buying opportunities and you wouldn't necessarily buy on a dollar uh, uh, dollar index to dxy you would look at you know buy trades on for example you know the the, the dollar swiss or the dollar yen for, um, for example right um so any confluence is there now if you're looking at short in the dollar i'm not too sure why you would want to do that but if you're you know if you're looking at short in the dollar then this is really a decent confluence technically um you know the dollar could come off the boil right and uh, there could be some profit taking and i'm not saying that prices can't go down in the short term of course they can but overall the path of least resistance is to the upside there was a few days where you had you know prices come down eventually went up right prices came down a little bit for a week or two and they went up a bit right prices come down prices go up prices went down a deeper pullback right people would have said the dollar selling off the end of the, the crash is coming but again they get caught on the wrong side so understanding the long-term fundamentals is really what you're you know what you should be um looking at to help your trading and uh, um this is the way really to, to to understand how markets move and predict longer term trends right so with that being said for me dollars still a buy um pullbacks um, into any kind of demand zones as confluence on the dxy will be confluence on any of the uh, forex pairs uh moving on to the dollar yen and the dollar yen um uh is going from strength to strength and so there is a demand zone there and we've got a demand zone here and if we zoom out in fact let's do all right so the the dollar yen well Oanda's has only gotten from 2003 but it actually goes back a bit further and um i think we're heading towards um all-time highs i think it was something around the 140 mark if i'm not mistaken um which was i think around i think it was at 1998 um so we're heading up towards these highs now um the, there is an opportunity to short this currency pair uh, based off of uh, central bank intervention. Uh, there has been a lot of talk of the Bank of Japan, um, you know, basically uh, intervening in the currency markets to potentially stop it from appreciating so rapidly. Um, but at the moment, uh, prices are really being driven by uh, policy divergences, meaning that the Fed are hiking and the Bank of Japan are not. So you're seeing this happen. Um, 
you know prices really you know uh, move a lot higher uh, pullbacks into that zone at 130 about 500 pips to the downside is really the, the only real um, uh, zone for me that I'm looking for if I'm looking to get long but there is a short opportunity um, coming into play potentially the higher this goes so nobody knows exactly um, you know where that level is but it looks like the 140 I think might be the um, might be the uh, the level or somewhere just just below that one one three six is one three one three seven is one three eight so let's uh, keep an eye or I'm definitely going to keep an eye with with uh, with the group as to when we're trying to when I'm going to enter into a potential short trade it's not a typical trade that I would enter into because I'm normally looking for bargains and maybe not even against the uh, the dollars uh, you know might be the best might not be the best trade but I think the yen um, central bank intervention will start to uh, strengthen so that could happen over the next uh, week or two or three um, but uh, keeping an eye on that but for now part of this resistance, it, resistance is to the uh, long side so any pullback should be buying opportunity to that 130 I think um, and that's what um, my bias is um, for now so I might take a short trade down to this 130 area and then maybe start to look for potential long trades uh dollar swiss dollar swiss uh dollar swiss i think the upside might be capped as well um swiss national bank is um would talk is that they might start to hike rates right so i don't think that the dollar will appreciate as much um or may not appreciate as much if the um, against the Swiss franc if the uh, Swiss National Bank come out and say they're looking to high rates so um, there could be a potential short here of course but ultimately I'm still looking to be a buyer um, at any pullbacks down to this 96 95 50 area and possibly into this uh, no 94 50 area so uh, looking that's my bias but again uh, potential uh, buy trades um, for the for the Swiss franc up at the highs if prices do come up the highs because this is obviously seen as an expensive area for the dollar Swiss exchange rate and this is seen as a potential bargain so um, we could see uh, the same repeat happen at either end uh, moving on to the dollar cad dollar cad not really a pair that i'm interested in both central banks are, uh, are hiking rates now um, what you have is i guess some demand here uh, definitely some demand there and uh, we are now into this supply zone right there We've also got supply right here now. Again, it's a difficult one. If you think that the, the Canadian dollar is a bargain at these prices, then there's a nice short trade there. If you think that the, uh, the, the, the US dollar is a bargain, if prices revisit this area down here, then that is where you really wanna look for buy trades. Um, again, for me, the analysis isn't technical analysis. Um, it's literally as simple as that fundamentally it's not really a pair that i'm interested in so uh, i think i will move on but it's decent uh, nevertheless on both sides if you're looking to take that technically uh, new zealand dollar us dollar similar thing um we've we had uh, last couple of weeks prices come up into the top end of this supply zone there's also a supply zone all up here um and then prices you know pretty much uh, fell away right so um, if you're looking to buy the dollar, that was a very nice opportunity. Uh, there are buying opportunities right here, though, in this demand zone here. So again, if you're seeing a wide area of demand or supply, one of the things that you want to do is uh, break it down so you can go down into the lower time frames and uh, look for uh, horizontal diagonal uh, support and resistance areas. So you go down to something like the, you know, for one hour, two hour, etc. And then knowing that this is an area within that demand zone, you can look at that zone there. Support and resistance as maybe within the overall bigger and uh, the larger higher time frame of, of demand as an area that you may want to get involved in, right? There's something also at the top right there, potentially, but you'd have to understand why you're looking to buy the New Zealand dollar against the US dollar and why that may be considered a bargain. For me, again, this pair is not something that I would really be interested in. Um, maybe down at the absolute lows, maybe an opportunity, but um, not really a pair that I'm looking to uh, get involved in. Not for me, anyways. Um, 
again both central banks looking to hike rates and uh, but in a risk off scenario which we more are in at the moment um, and there are definitely inflation worries etc the dollar the um, US dollar should be the really the one to uh, to buy over the commodity currency um, now this is a uh, trade that I have been in for um, a week or two and it's finally I mean it's paid off already but I've reached second targets and now looking at you know close to third targets which is going to be around the one two two five or six areas um, I'm going back up to the daily so um, a few weeks ago um, I said to you guys that if you look at the um, the video that I posted probably around this you know the end of May uh, the weekly video I said that I was in short of this area um, and the guys in the group also you know would have seen that as well that I was short at this on this day here the 27th um, so if you look at probably the uh, the 30th uh, or the 29th of May weekend in the 29th of May or beginning start of 29th of May I was saying that I was short around here you can see now that uh, prices have moved a good few hundred pips from there um, yeah about 300 odd pips so um, really nice trade so far two positions take or well, three positions taken two taken off and so a final position now is uh, is towards uh, the lower end of the auction so um, but currently we have this area here acting as supply and uh, say there's demand there uh, demand and there is I'm gonna there is a I would say that level is probably uh, yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna just delete that you could if you wanted to get long there it's it's you know you could if you wanted to but for me um, part of this resistance is really to the downside again fundamentally why is that and it's because out of the two, the US dollar and the uh, and, and and the UK, the US, the sorry, the UK is really kind of struggling um, with inflation as well as um, uh, their economy, right? So the UK should not raise hopes that peak inflation is imminent. So falls in global commodity prices offset by domestic pressures, Britain on track for double digit inflation this year. Crazy, double digit. Um, a fall in prices. Uh, in the price, sorry, yeah, prices of a few key global commodity indicators has raised hopes that the world economy may have reached peak inflation, but UK households best not get carried away, say um, economists warn. So, um, uh, we've, been, we've been saying this a while in the group, and uh, a, a lot of the guys, um, you know, are, are short on the pound and uh, made some really, um, some really profitable trades on for example the pound cad we've been in um you know pound new zealand etc and uh, you've seen those trades really play out over the, again the medium to long term but uh, as we stand now any pullbacks into that zone i think a decent or maybe the, the absolute absolute highs might be a decent short um and uh, and yeah but if you do want to get long on this then it's really i think that's really the uh, the play but there's also been forecasts that we're talking about the 120 being actually a target that could be reached so um there's there's also there's that as well so let's see what happens uh with with that but for me again the pound is uh, definitely not a pair or not a currency that i'm looking to buy especially not over the uh the, uh, the the US dollar um, euro the euro the ECB meeting came out and um, a lot of traders ended up getting caught on this uh, uh, strangely enough we were talking about this in the group um, and that we were prepared for prices to go to 105 and in fact they are a few pips away about six pips away from that 105 mark so uh, I'll pretty much break it down for you guys so Basically, on the 8th of June, we were reading an article by ING who said um, that Euro and ECB preview, right? So this was before the news came out. So no hawk is surprised unless Lagarde hints at 50 basis point hike. So what ING were basically saying that is that any message that does not signal openness to a 50 basis point hike would likely fall short of the market's hawkish expectations and push the Euro to a Euro dollar to closer to 105. So you know the smart money talk right this isn't they're not mentioning all the blocks or anything like that no nonsense like that they're looking at the fundamentals as to the reasons why prices will go where they're going to go so um, that's what they were looking at and so on the 8th of uh, uh, June 
where were we? We were somewhere up here, right? 8th of June was here, this day here. So they were talking about when prices were 106s, 107s, they were talking about 105s, right? And then what happened was is that the um, the, the news the news came out and uh, they weren't really that hawkish. But also, but even before that, um, and I well, say before that, but as... Um, I guess a backdrop to you know the, the fall of the euro potentially if the ECB weren't um, hawkish was that the uh, ECB's most dire forecast may have been too optimistic so economically the European Central Bank's worst case scenario march for the fallout from Russia invasion of Ukraine might now be too optimistic so they're potentially having to they're having you know severe growth problems economic growth problems so there's also that so we can talk about rate hikes all we want but just like the UK if the if the um, economy can't support rate hikes then um, unfortunately the central bank may not you know uh, are in a very difficult situation where do they rate hike do they hike rates or do they um, do they not right do they hike rates as aggressively and if they because if they do then they might send the economy into uh, a recession so with that being said I you know again uh, being part of the group you would have known this and so um again you know we were thinking to ourselves well the 105s for sure now the euro could be a, a potential buy right it could be a potential buy but um in the short term this is what we were thinking and i had a live call with the guys and we were talking about this anyways um ended up on the you know after the um after the meeting that you know ecb hawkishness not enough to lift the euro right now so the implicit openness to a 50 basis point hike in september by the european central bank today generated only a short-lived bounce in the euro dollar we think that rising peripheral spreads and grim growth outlook basically grim growth which was this um uh, you know outlook in the eurozone are keeping the euro at check and that a return to 105 remains lightly likely so with that being said what happened on that day you had a return to the 105s right pretty much right there nearly to the pip right so a lot of traders ended up going long i'm not going to break it down i do have this um, on my channel um, where we were talking about traders being drawn in long right which video was it one second let me just uh, pause this and find the actual video where i'm talking about it yeah here we were and it's on i released it on the 10th of june so forex fundamental euro trade analysis how to trade the news and basically uh, a lot of people say that you know you can you might have known this in hindsight but i'm just proving in the in this video that we were prepared for the euro to go shorter right and how traders are being caught out so you can watch that after this video and if we go back to um you know the charts this is pretty much what we were talking about traders gone long and then all of a sudden down to the 105 so not really hindsight bias because this was all been prepared this is information that we knew before you know the news was being drawn in and so um traders made money on this as well so um let's see uh, what happens but going forward uh will this be the, the cap on the uh, on the euro possibly potentially um it could go lower um but if it does i think this might be as well a decent buying opportunity um but i think with the with a more hawkish fed um prices may want to go to you know a bit more to the downside uh, maybe 105 isn't the uh the actual extreme limit but let's see what happens i'm not really buying the euro against the dollar for now anyway um so any pullbacks into uh this area here think of decent buying opportunities for the dollar as long as the dollar um, remains supported by rate hikes um, moving on to the Australian dollar US dollar again not really a pair that I'm looking to trade uh, but it is um, from a technical analysis perspective again similar to the uh, New Zealand dollar um, US dollar prices pretty much came up to the top end of that supply zone and it ended up selling off I'm gonna basically move that to there and move that up a bit right here <coughs> again two central banks um, hiking rates the Fed are definitely ahead of the Australian dollar but um, let's see what happens I think where we are right now if we look at there I think this is all demand demand zone and then we've got 
demands on there. Could see a, a buying opportunity at some point, but I'm not really keen on this pair. I think really the buying opportunities would be all the way down there if you're looking to buy the Australian dollar or pull back into you know that supply zone there before literally getting a short Aussie yen. And again, not Aussie yen. My bias has been to the upside, and uh, we are pulling back into a, into an okay level. Um, I just wanted to see if there is um, moving fair value. Yeah, I'm not really too keen on this um, trade. Well, it hasn't got certain confluences that I like, but if you do want to get involved in this to the long side, definitely that's a, a definite an opportunity. I, I probably want a deeper pullback um, into this, the 90s and just below that 90s before looking at getting uh, long on this pair again. So let's see uh, with the central bank of um, Japan potentially looking to uh, intervene. Of course, this could also be a nice shorting opportunity. But until they really come out and start to signal that they are going to intervene, then um, that trade, I would probably say again, the path of these resistance is, is more to the upside. Um, but there is an opportunity to get short um, uh, looking for the fundamentals. Um, and then uh, looking at gold and gold just found this article uh, today as I was doing some prep for this uh, video and um, the central banks to increase gold holdings over crisis concerns emerging market central banks are worrying about everything from inflation to supply chain chaos the central banks see gold as a reserve asset and will likely increase their holdings of the metal in the next 12 months according to a survey survey by the gold world gold council i think the last time i saw that happen um uh was back in 2020 or 2019 in fact i think i had a video about it on youtube i must, must look for it um but basically uh, there was um, i think it was around 2019 2020 um uh, there was uh, reports of of the central banks increasing their gold positions and then look what ended up happening right gold went from the 13s 14s to up to the 20s so again this is just a if you look at you know gold being this is an expensive area this was a bargain area bargain bargains then um and a potential bargain where prices made new highs then this again being that bargain which prices did again come off of i right? had demand zone there and uh with inflation it makes all the sense in the world for gold to um you know increase right um to be because gold is typically a hedge against inflation so let's see what happens and i get it though with with the dollar um you know uh, strengthening uh, typically works inverse to to gold um so gold should want to come down if, if the dollar is is rising but i think if central banks are looking to buy gold to hedge against um you know a lot of risks that are potentially happening not only inflation but supply chain problems then any pullbacks on gold should actually be a nice buying opportunity so in fact if you want to add this as being an area where gold could pull back down to could do um before looking to go higher um because i think there is uh, definitely support for gold with central banks buying um uh, based off of obviously increased risk sentiment if you're looking to short gold then there is uh, you know that supply zone right there um, and uh, and yeah let's see what happens though but again my bias would be again to the to, to the long side anyways guys uh, that's it for this week um, definitely check out the videos on the YouTube channel don't forget to like subscribe and share and I uh, hope you have a great trading week all the best speak soon